Hi everyone, welcome back today. So we're doing, I don't know why I've never really done this video. I get asked all the time about my hair. Well, not that often. Oh, can you hear the bells? What time is it? Three o'clock, we'll get three rings. There we go. But of all the things that I get asked, my hair is like top three that I get asked about all the time. And I just, I don't know why, I, I guess because it feels so auto to me, like I just go on autopilot, it feels like there's nothing new and exciting that I have to bring to the table here, but maybe there is. I, I guess I have a few little tips and tricks. I did make a video on how to make your curls last for days long time ago, like when we lived in our very first London apartment, I think it was like four years ago or something. There's still some good tips and tricks in there if you want more in addition to this video, but this is basically just gonna be running you through my everyday curling routine. Not every day, but you know, whenever I curl my hair, just like my basic curls, the Andy curls. I do a few different things with my curls now, like there's, I use the same curler, but I just use it in a different way. Um, to get a slightly different curl. I've been playing with that a little bit in recent weeks and then I obviously do my waves a lot. So if you watch my vlogs and whatnot, my hair often is in waves versus curls these days, but might be a phase, I don't know. But for probably about 15 years, I've been curling my hair like I'm about to show you now. So I guess I'll start with what I actually use in terms of products. Um, the curler I use is a real old girl. To be careful because she's already heated up for us. I think it's a one inch, I want to say. It's really old from Conair Infinity. I've been using this probably as long as I've been curling my hair. <laughs> I've probably had it at least 10 years and she's still going strong, works better than any of the newer ones I have. Yeah, can't complain. I think they do still sell this one but in color so I'll make sure it's linked down below if you're interested. I put it on max heat setting. I don't really get the heat thing like in my head the higher the heat the less I have to hold it on my hair if I put on a medium heat I'm just gonna have to hold it on my hair longer to get the curl I want so I just crank her all the way up I have a comb it's not normally this clean I did just clean it for you special for you a little hair clip also very very old about as old as my curler it's missing a few teeth actually one tooth but does the trick. Um, and then in terms of dry shampoo, I always use the Batiste. I like trying out different ones, but I always come back to the Batiste. This is mostly second day, but if my hair is squeaky, squeaky clean, I'll sometimes throw some of this into it just to give it a little bit of texture, because as you can see, I have very straight hair. It's very fine, very thin. It's almost like baby hair, so when there's nothing in it, uh, it, it won't do very much. <laughs> It'll barely hold a bobby pin, so it does need a little bit of grit. In terms of hairspray, I don't really use hairspray anymore. I just get curling. But if you want it to really, really hold and you want some extra grit for your curling iron to hold onto, I would suggest throwing on some hairspray as you go. Pull out a chunk, spray it down, let it you know, kind of run it through my finger to disperse the hairspray, let it dry, and then curl it, and that just gives the curling iron a little something to hold on to. I usually just skip this step now though, so mostly I use this just for flyaways on the top because I have lots of little baby hairs. Yeah, and then in the end, I will show you how I put Karen in. If you're not following on Instagram, um, you may not know who Karen is. Karen, meet YouTube. YouTube, beat Karen. <laughs> She's happy to be here, she says. So these are my little fill-in, clip-in hair extensions. I don't use them all the time, but um, lately I have been. So I'll show you how I clip those in once my hair's all curled. I'll make sure to have these linked down below, but there is another company that I prefer to these ones for a few different reasons. So I'll make sure the ones I prefer are linked down below. We'll get back to you, Karen. Hold tight. Fresh hair, just washed and dried. Um, I did my vinegar rinse today, feeling clean. There's no glue hair. Um, as you can see, it is very thin, fine. It's a lot thinner, actually, now that I'm in my 30s, I, especially in the last like five years, I would say I have lost a lot of hair and it just never grows back again. The joys of aging. Even though my hair is really fine and thin, it does tend to hold a curl quite well. So once these curls are in, as long as I can maintain them and keep them out of the rain, they'll hold for probably three or four days. Let's get curling. I'm gonna throw half my hair up. Like I said, my hair is pretty fine, so I only do divide it into two sections because there's just not much of it. <laughs> so if I really want my hair to hold, to hold for a good couple days or I run, want it to be really bouncy and full rather than like a flat, kind of looser curl, then I will do more sections. So 
I think I'll go with a fluffy hair today because we're going to be biking to a, new, a venue that we're going to tonight for dinner and a show and it's supposed to pour down rain so I'm kind of calculating that into how I'm curling my hair. I'm going to wear a rain jacket obviously but it's going to be like pound rain and I know the moisture is going to suck some of my curl out so I want it to be big and full so that when I get there tonight hopefully some of my curl is still left intact. Normally if, I'm, if I was doing a looser curl I would just do two sections here but I think I'm going to split it into three just to give it a better survival chance. <laughs> I'm really hoping I'm not gonna burn myself because I'm doing this in the, the viewfinder of my camera here. I feel like this could go wrong, but let's hope for the best here. So I always point my curler down and I do not use my clip. I do a wrapping style to give you more of a wave rather than like a traditional ribbon curl, so. And I also do all my curls away from my face. So a lot of people like to do rotating so they don't kind of congeal all together and it makes it like a little more natural looking I guess but I just prefer the look of everything going away from my face so curl away and then the trick here is to give it a twist around twist around twist and leave a little bit of your end out it starts to look more like a wrap style kind of rope like around your curling iron that'll give you more of a wave curl rather than a ribbon curl as you can see I was just touching it so I just go by touch, I don't go by time. Um, so whenever I can feel the heat coming through to the front side of the hair here, I let it go, I hold it. This is another step to making it sure it really lasts a long time and this is gonna give you a more um, bouncy, voluminous curl rather than a flat curl. If I wanted it to be, see how curly that is? If I had just dropped it and let it go, it would have been probably sitting a few inches lower down here, which I do sometimes. Sometimes I just drop them because I want that like second day curl on day one. But because of the rain situation tonight, um, we're gonna hold on to them. Cool down in my hand so that they're a little bit more bouncy. Twist, twist, twist. Looks like a little rope. At the top here, you can't really avoid more of that ribbon style curl, but um, you get the idea. <laughs> Let it go down into my hand. Literally just shake the heat out of it. And I just hold on to it until I can feel it's cool to the touch. Shaking it around does help a little bit. <laughs> Look how curly that thing is. <laughs> so again, if you wanted a more loose curl then you could brush through them now but if you want a more tight curl leave them don't brush them out until the end you definitely do want to brush them out but not until you've actually curled everything let it set even 30 minutes let it sit and do its thing so i'm going to do the exact same thing on this side hopefully i'm not missing any pieces back here giving myself a rat tail <laughs> it's not the look we're going for Sometimes I even, like I just did, I kind of choke it all the way up so they're all really close together and that just gets it even tighter versus spreading it out across the uh, curler. And for anybody that is worried about my hand and where my glove is and that I should be using a glove, I never used a glove. I've been doing this 15 years, never used a glove. I have given myself slight hinges once in a while, but I mean, I think this is probably the most dangerous thing I've done with my curler actually. Curling my hair using a viewfinder. If I'm gonna burn myself, it's probably gonna be today. <laughs> so still curling away from my face and then twisting once it comes around so you get more of a rope like, hopefully you can see that. Okay, so that is the bottom half done. We're gonna let those continue to chill. I feel like I missed something in here or I left too much end out. It'll probably all blend out fine anyways. <laughs> so I'm gonna steal the clip from the top here, clip that bottom curl down, and then continue with the top here. So I'll show you up close here what I'm doing when I twist the hair. Twist here, round, twist, around, twist, leave an end out, 
and then just bring it on up and then just keep tapping feeling if you're comfortable <laughs> until you can feel the heat come through on the other side hold it shake this is much more difficult doing this in a viewfinder <laughs> than I thought it was going to be normally when I'm just doing this down on my mirror on the floor in my bedroom it takes me about 10 minutes tops one nice thing about having thin fine hair <laughs> doesn't take long to dry or curl. front piece is one of the most important pieces so I make sure that gets nice and curled and then while it's still slightly warm I will brush through it a little bit and then just tuck a little bit of that front section back to my ear because I like when that curl hits right where it naturally would if your hair were to dry if you had it tucked behind your ear so while it's still warm I give it a little tuck behind my ear so that it naturally finds its spot it's already kind of figuring out where it needs to be. So I just leave that like that while I do my other side and when I release it, it'll be perfectly where I want it. I keep feeling like I'm missing pieces because I can't really see what I'm doing here. <laughs> Hopefully you can. thing on this side for a couple minutes. This side isn't as crucial as this front piece. As you can see I split my hair kind of off center a little bit. So this side with the most hair is more important that it gets that that wave that I like. Might as well. So we are all curled I think from what I can see and feel. <laughs> so it is obviously super curly like curly Sue you do not want to leave it like this. Biggest mistake that people will make when curling their hair is not brushing it out. It is meant to be curled out. Brushed out. <laughs> I'm looking at this side and realizing that it is a lot longer and a lot less curl. That's why I said curl, but maybe it'll work itself out. If not, I'll add some more. So obviously this is a pretty tight curl. Using a one inch curling iron, you're going to get a very tight curl like this. It, obviously the bigger and barrel you get, the more big of a curl you get, but my hair just doesn't like to hold a curl for more than like a day if I go much bigger than this. So I usually just stick with the one inch and then my favorite, favorite hair day is always second day. That's when my hair kind of like smooths out, all the soldiers have figured out, you know, where they're supposed to be and it just looks really nice, smooth. They're not getting like all clumpy and stuck together and stringy looking. So maybe I'll, I'll try to insert a few pictures of what second day curls from this hairstyle looks like. Um, I actually don't really like it much first day because it, it kind of just wants to look like this. Like even when I start to brush it out, it'll always find its way back to looking more PC like this versus on second day, it just turns into like a natural blowout kind of look. So now we just wanna wait, let it set for like a good 30 minutes. I often don't do that. <laughs> And for the sake of this video, I'm just going to brush through it. Oh, the satisfaction of brushing through freshly curled hair. So good. So hopefully you can see this kind of curl gives you more of... It's almost like a retro wave. 
um, but with the ends out just makes it look a little more modern versus like a really tight ribbon curl. I don't know, the ribbon curl just feels a little bit more done up to me. This just feels a little bit more effortless even though it's not. <laughs> but this is kind of what it looks like on second day, just slightly looser, but you know, just not all pieced together. First day it just doesn't quite know where it wants to be and it wants to fall apart again like this side versus second day it all just kind of smooths out. Lots and lots of brushing to kind of pull it down, loosen up the curl a little bit, break it apart. I find myself brushing my hair a lot on day one just because I want it to kind of loosen up and become more like day two. <laughs> and I find touching with my hands a lot to kind of, again, give it a little bit more grit. Helps to kind of smooth it out and figure out where it wants to be, get all its ducks in a row. Yada yada, just play with it. The more you play with it, the better it gets. One side always turns out better than the other. Today I like this side better. You can see the wave more versus it looks more like a curl on this side. And I like that I left more uncurled here straight. I think I went a little bit too low on most of the curls here to leave this, like the ends are curled here, which, oops. So enter Karen. So these are just two, two clip wefts that I use. Um, they've already got their curl in them. I'm just gonna brush through them, make sure they're nice and smooth. The re one of the reasons I kind of prefer the other ones that I'll have linked down below versus these ones is because these ones have quite a thick stitching at the top here and because my hair is so fine and thin I find it a little bit harder to conceal versus the other pair has kind of a seamless top. The hair runs all the way up to the very top of the weft and it looks really nice and thin, sleek, and it'll just not leave any kind of lumps and bumps where you're not nervous that your, you know, your clips hanging out somewhere. These ones work really well too, I do love them, but I think if I had an option or going back, I would probably purchase the other ones. But one goes on one side and the other goes on the other because again, like I like all the curls going in one direction, so I kind of got to figure out which way it goes. It doesn't want to go that way. <laughs> so it sits nicely this way. So I know this one goes on this side. And then I just try to match it up with the bottom of my hair because I like a nice, thick, blunt cut. So I just try to line it up with where my hair is. And depending on how curly my hair is, how much the curl's fallen out of the extension will depend on where I actually stick it. So we'll guess about here for now. Pretty good guess. Still working with my viewfinder, so I might have to go over to my big mirror to see what I'm doing here. Fix it up. Out there. Taking Karen on the town tonight. Big date night. <laughs> Just gives so much more volume. I don't use them at all for um, for length, I kind of, I like my length, <laughs> but I do have really fine hair, so I just prefer to have a few extra little clips in. Yeah, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. I'm just gonna throw a little hairspray on top here for my little flyaways. Smooth that out. Like I said, you can add a little bit of dry shampoo or some texturizing spray to give it a little bit of oomph, but that is about it. Obviously when I head outside or get on my bike where my hair is gonna be flying all around and I just pull it all back into a ponytail and I kind of do like a little half bun. And then I throw my hood over top or throw a scarf over top of my head, anything to kind of protect the hair as I'm biking or it's raining. And then when I go to sleep at night, I always wear it in a loose bun at the top of my head right up here. Um, if you check out my last hair video, then I kind of talk about that a little bit more, but basically this curl and this curl and where they all kind of sit, lines up with where the ponytail hits so it holds my curls overnight, keeps them protected, and then I have nice curls when I wake up in the morning. I'm trying to think if there's any other tips and tricks that I need to put in here, but I feel like I've said most of it. It's pretty simple. Um, the twist that you put as you're wrapping into on the actual barrel is key to get this shape of curl, so. I think that's it though. Hopefully that was helpful and it's not just repeat everything you already knew. 
didn't just waste 20 minutes of your time. <laughs> if you did enjoy the video, you can share it. There's a little share button below your video here, down below, just somewhere. You can send it off into the internet. Make sure to give the video a like if you did enjoy it, you found it helpful. Um, and make sure you subscribe to my channel because oh, YouTube, I have gotten a few messages lately of people saying their my videos just aren't showing up for them anymore. They have to actually type in my name and search for me and go find my videos, which is very annoying. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, hopefully that'll help with that problem. And thank you so much for watching. Sorry it took me so many years to do this video. I hope it was worth the wait. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.